Let's pray. <laughs> Close your eyes. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you that we can uh, learn more about your word today. And uh, Lord, help us to always uh, put you first in our life. And I pray, Lord, that you'll teach the children this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, girls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what did we learn about last week? Does anyone remember? Anyone remember? Hmm. Remember, I started with W. Remember? Huh? Judges? No, it wasn't from Judges. It's from first time. You only remembers. War? What happens in war? Who remembers? Huh? Winning. That's right. Winning with God. Remember? Wow, we win. But the battles of the Lord's, isn't it? Remember our verse from last week? We'll read it together. You ready? 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 47. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Remember, there are some battles to win with God, and one of them was salvation. We can overcome the devil by believing on Jesus. What are we going to learn about this week? Today we're going to learn about, and now that's what we've got the craft. You're wondering what the balloons are about. We're going to learn about what the balloons are for in a moment. Okay? So today, we're talking about none like the Lord. Nothing like the Lord. That's what that means. Do you know how great God is? Who knows how great God is? Well, everyone knows how great God is. Well, God is so great, the Bible says there's nothing like God. Pay attention, girls. I'll be able to see your eyes. Very good. Pay attention, Atticus, pay attention. That means there's nothing like God. But sometimes, sometimes we think there are things better than God, don't we? All right, there's nothing like God. Nothing like God. All right, let's look at our memory verse. This is from 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. I'll read it first and then we'll read it together. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 22. Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God. Look at this, for there is none like thee. That's how we get our title today, right? None like the Lord. Neither is there any God beside thee. See, there's not another God besides God. The only other gods there are false gods. Not true. According to all that we have heard with our ears. So everything we've heard about, everything we know about, there's nothing like God. Thank you. You sit quietly, pay attention. Okay, eyes up here. So let's read it together. You ready? 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 22. Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. Okay? So, we're talking about none like the Lord. Is there anyone like Jesus Christ that loved you like Jesus loved you? No, not only did he die for you, but he provides everything for you, everything we have. Do you know that comes from God? Sometimes we don't realize that. We think, oh, but then this person got this for me, and this person got this for me. But how did that person get that stuff? See, ultimately, everything comes from God. God is the one that even gives us our life to be able to get things. Right? So there is nobody like the Lord Jesus. Do you know, we learned about this guy last week. Remember this picture from last week? Who is this? Satan. Yeah, Satan. This is a picture of Satan, isn't he? You can see his wings. This is somebody's drawing of him. We don't know if that's what he really looks like, but you know, he's very scary. You know, he wanted to be like God. Did you know that? He wanted to be like God. He wanted to be like the Most High, the Bible says. But do you think he can be like God? No. Why? Because there's none like the Lord, is there? None like the Lord. Even if they want to try and be like the Lord, there is none like the Lord. Sometimes in our own life, we put things 
above God, don't we? We try and make things better than God. What are some examples? When we sometimes put things or things in our life above God. Well, here's an example. You remember this picture from last week? What's happening here? What's happening here? <laughs> Sarah. He's winning a game, isn't he? Look at him. <laughs> he's very happy. What about him? Oh, he's not taking it very well, is he? Sad. Sometimes we put, and sometimes we do this in kids' clubs, don't we? We put winning a game above God. How do we do that? Because God wants us to behave well. God wants us to react well. He wants us to be joyful when we win and also be joyful even if we don't win. But sometimes we put winning above God and we say, we don't care what God thinks. We want to win so much, we get upset. But we don't want to put winning a game above God, do we? So even when we win or we lose, we're always happy and we're always glad. You're either happy for the winning team and he's happy that he had somebody to play with. Okay? That's one way we can put something above God. God, what's another thing that people put above God? What do you think, Danny? Money. See, there's all these gold coins here. This would be worth a lot. You know how much one of these gold coins will cost today if you were to buy one of them? How much money do you have? How much money do you have? You know how much money you have? How much, how much money do you have, Zephy? Uh, $54. $54. Whoa, you've been working hard. That's good. Do you know how much one of these costs? These costs right now they cost you maybe two, oh, two and a half thousand dollars. So you can do the maths. Who knows how many, how much more that is? <laughs> more than what Zephy's got. That's just one of them. Imagine how much money is here. But some people put money above God, don't they? You know, they spend their life, they worship this stuff. They live for this. They want to get their joy from this. They find their purpose in life from this. But is money like God? What do you think? No. Who thinks money is like God? Oh, I thought you were putting your hand up there. It was a trick question. <laughs> no, you're just scratching yourself. No, money is not like God at all. Money cannot compare to what God has. God is the one that gives us power to get wealth. So money is not like God. It's another way people put something above God. What do you think, Abel? Soccer. How do they put soccer above God? Do you know? How do you think, Zephy? Ah, oh, very good. Sometimes people, maybe you have a sports competition on a Sunday. Oh, and you have to decide, am I going to go to God's house, do what God wants me to do, or am I going to go play my sport? Maybe it's a very important game. Oh, which one should come first? What do you think? Church should come first, shouldn't it? We should never skip church in order to play sport. That's one way people put sports above God. We want God to always be first. There's nothing like God here in sports. It's not like God. All right, what's another one? Where we put... Thing, what, what, can we, what is this one? We you know? Games. Playing games. Oh, I think everyone knows this game. Well, what's this game? Who knows? Do you know this game? Minecraft. Hey, don't call out. Excuse me. You put your hand up. I'm going to choose you. Okay? So this is Minecraft, isn't it? Okay, put your hands down. Oh, some people, how do they put computer games and iPad games above God? That's all you think about. All you want to talk about. You want to spend all your time playing games rather than focused on God, doing things for God. Okay? So we don't want games, computer games, to be Mike like God. Isn't that right? And one more. <laughs> What's another one where sometimes people put above God? What do you think? What do you think this is? Photos? No, this is a photo of some people, but it starts with the same sound. Family and friends. Family and friends. Now, we love our family and friends, don't we? You guys are all my friends. But are you better than God? No, no. Am I better than God? No. Should we love our family and friends more than we love God? No. So sometimes people, they put their family and friends above God. 
You know, and they'll prioritize things for their family and events for their family, and they'll skip church, and they'll skip the things of God. They don't spend, they spend lots and lots of time with their family, but not lots and lots of time doing things for God. So that's another way where we can put friends and family above God. But who should be first? Who should be at the top? God. That's right. So there is none like God. <laughs> and isn't he worthy? Isn't he worthy to be put first? You know, he put you first when he died on the cross for you, for you, for you. He died on the cross for you. He died on the cross for you as well and for you and for you as well. And even this one at the front who's uh, complaining. He died for you too. You know that? <laughs> you want to go to mummy? You go to mummy. Okay, go. All right. So let's read our memory verse one more time. <laughs> it's a long one, so you have to actually try and memorize this one. It's a bit harder. Okay? Let's read it together again. Ready? Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 22. Atticus, you too. Come on, look up here. Let's try it again. Now, now Atticus is paying attention. Come on, sit up. Sit up, buddy. Oh, I want you paying attention as well, okay? Don't fall asleep. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 22. Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. Okay? All right, we have a craft today. To just reflect on what we learned today. I don't know if we have an example. Let's see if uh, we have an example. You guys keep sitting. Sit down, please. We got an example? Oh, sorry. That's all right. Um, this one has God on it. <laughs> all right, what are we doing today? Oops. Oopsies. Look at this. All right. We've got a balloon. And we've got some pictures we need to color in or some things we need to write down. What's this? What does that look like? Toys. All right. And we talked about this one today. What's that one? Put your hand up. Simon? Sports. Very good. What about this one? Who knows? Atticus, do you know this one? Birthday parties. So these are some ideas, some things that people put before God. We're going to put them on this string. What does this balloon represent? What do you think, Zephy? God. All right, so God is high and lifted up. And whatever you put in your life, we're going to be reminded that God is always high. There's nothing like God. Okay? We're going to color these in. And you can write or draw some things of your own. Sometimes other things we put before God. Okay? All right, let's stand up. We're going to go to the back.